questions. All right, Jordan, thanks for uh, taking the time to, to chat with me today, man. So for anybody watching this video, just, uh, just so that they know, state your name, where you guys farm at, and what your operation looks like. My name is Jordan Kremlachik. Uh, live in Morse Bluff, Nebraska, about an hour west of Omaha. Um, we raise corn and soybeans, about 2,000 acres, and then I have a direct market hog operation. Okay, awesome. Then just newly married, right? Yep, newly okay. married. Cool. So um, let's see, how long ago did you join Legacy Farmer? Was it last summer? I'd say last, probably, probably right about a year. Probably right about a year. Okay, perfect. So first question is, is what was really not working in life? What were the biggest pains and problems and challenges and just, just stuff that Jordan was dealing with that made you, made you want to join Legacy Farmer? Um, really financially, um, got, I got in a little bit of debt buying some farm ground. It was a uh, pretty penny, um, kind of the stories I was just telling myself of really just, really just telling myself negative stories all the time and the feedback loops and really not knowing who to talk to, not knowing where to, where to go to figure things out. Um, yeah, just not making money really. Yeah. So not making money, no clarity on what you should or shouldn't be doing, right? Who to trust really. Right. And then like, as far as starting a business, I mean, I was just, I was just growing corn and soybeans. I wasn't even doing the hogs and not having another business to cash flow something that was, that was a big thing, not being able to cash flow, just strictly running off an operating loan and then not, not no, just relying on the volatility of the market. And as we know, that's just not, uh, it's just not going to cut it. Yep. Yep. hundred percent, a hundred percent. Okay. So what, uh, well, let's just talk about this for a second. Okay. So you started in Academy and then inside of legacy farm, we have Academy empire and legends, and then you've moved up to legends beginning of this year. Right. So what was the primary decision around making the commitment, the time, the energy and the money to join the legends group? Really, for me, for me, it's accountability because I mean, it's just easy. It's easy to get off track or it is for me. So having that accountability every day that I know that I have to do that and then coughing up the money to do it. If, if it was just, you know, 50 bucks to do it, you're not, you're not going to be as serious, I guess. So just the accountability and along with that, like in the legends group, everything we do through the core four. Um, yep. It just, I, looking back, I don't know. It's understandable that I wasn't getting the results that I, that I wanted because I don't know how you could operate not doing core four now. Yeah. Or stack. How, how powerful is it having the other guys inside of the group that are literally, you know, just as committed as you are and doing the same thing on a daily basis? That's, that's powerful because a lot of times we think we're the only ones dealing with a certain problem. And, you know, when we share our stacks back and forth, you read somebody else's and you just kind of laugh to yourself. It's like, wow, I deal with the same thing. Um, and then see how they're, how they tackle that issue or you can, you know, talk back and forth. So that's, that's pretty valuable. Yeah. How valuable is it for you being able to see somebody else's issues and seeing how they are solving them? Like, like how many mistakes are you, are you, do you think you're keeping from making because you're able to hear what's going on with other people's situations? A lot of them. And that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's probably one of the biggest values of knowing what not to do, learning what not to do. Um, I don't know if you can put a price tag on that. Hundred percent, because you know, and I've said this before, man. But and you know this, there's no small mistakes in farming. There's no small mistakes in farming. Like if you, 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 for example, buying the ground, right? If you and I would have have a, had a conversation prior to you buying the ground, would you probably have made different decisions around it? No, I, I would have no, never. You still would have. Well, no, I would have never. I would have never bought the ground at that. Oh, okay, time. All right. So, yeah, but you know, I'm glad I did because it led me to this point and. Uh, all the growth we've had since there. Yeah. 
Okay. So out of everything that we're doing, man, um, and you've been in for a year now, like out of all the tools, the resources, the trainings, the coaching calls, out of everything that we're doing, what is your, like, what's the one thing, what's the one, uh, you know, Jordan's favorite thing about what we're doing inside of Legacy Farmer? Oh boy, that'd be hard to pinpoint. Um, again, I mean, for me, I, I really do like the core four, um, the, the stack, um, being able to release my frustrations when I am frustrated yep. instead of on somebody else. Um, the gratitude stacks are great. Um, farm metrics. I, I, I think that's going to be a very valuable tool um, and whatever else is to come, but kind of the accountability thing working out in the morning too. I mean, it just, there's a lot of people just don't do it and they give up on your health. And if you don't have your health, you can't, you're just not going to be effective. Um, so that's, uh, I've, I've made some significant progress in that area since joining Legacy Farmer because of that. So do you feel like just like, okay, so you're talking more about the operational system. Like you said earlier, like, I don't know how just, something operates anymore without doing this. Which is really just a basic, basic thing. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's my value. Has it kept you you know, a lot of this stuff, and this is what some of the guys have experienced is that when they come in, you know, when we talk about this operating system for the person watching this video, like the operating system, you see why you need it when stuff is going bad. Right. Like, go ahead. Well, I mean, like today I had a stack on, uh, sometimes something bad happens. You, you start to see the negatives and things and then you kind of go down a spiraling you start spiraling downwards and I've kind of started to reverse my thinking of, of seeing the positives in those. And I don't know what, without the stack, you just, you just act off emotion. And that's uh which I see a lot of people do that. You just act off, off a of pure emotion and you, you just never going to get what you want that way. How many dollars do you think people lose every year because of emotional reactions or emotional decisions? Well, I mean, it would be millions, millions, but um, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about farmer metrics. So, you know, you've been inside of Legends Group and inside of Legends Group, we do this thing called farmer metrics. And I mean, you already know what I'm, I'm teaching you guys and why it's valuable and things like that. But to somebody watching this video, like what is, what is the one most valuable piece of information or one most valuable thing about farmer metrics to you? Kind of just being able to, see my numbers where I'm at. Um, and then your leverage with the bank and then being able to, well, really to look at the numbers all the time and going over them, if not monthly, quarterly, um, before you just kind of looking at your numbers at the end of the year, it's like, Oh, well shoot, uh, had a good year or had a bad year. Well, it's too late to make a course correction there. If you're going over it monthly or quarterly, it uh you can change things and we only get so many opportunities to do this you know you might get 40 chances to to grow a crop or whatever you're doing well if you're uh you're waiting to do it at the end of the year you screw it up i mean you don't have it's running out of chances yep 100 percent. so is it valuable because inside of those farmer metrics calls you know, we're looking at each other's numbers. You're seeing what's working and not working for another guy as well. Is that valuable for you to see? No, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Okay. So again, it goes back to, you know, no small, there's no small financial mistakes on the farm, right? So being able to, to listen to and hear what other guys are doing, what mistakes they've made, and then actually see their numbers and how that's impacted their position with the bank and where they're at financially. It's hard to put a value on that. Right. And just, uh, kind of real time knowing where you're at. So, you know, say if I, you know, I think I have money in the bank or whatever my position is and I want to make purchase a, a truck or some other piece of equipment that I think I can afford. Well, I can punch that number in and how does that affect my, my leverage with the bank? I mean, how does it change numbers in it? You may think you can afford it and maybe you can, but it, uh, you're able to see what it does. Yep. Which impacts every decision you make going forward. Right. The emotional decisions. So. 
hundred percent. And out of all the relationships you have throughout the year, the one with the bank is the most critical one to the overall success or failure of your operation. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. How many guys do you think are actually updating their numbers like you are every single month and then having a call about it and going through and walking through them out of, out of all a hundred percent of farmers, how many you think are actually doing that? Um, I don't, I mean, I, I personally don't know any besides the ones no. in the group. Yep. So I'd say maybe 1%, mm -hmm. maybe 1%, but they're not doing it the way we are with being out, like seeing, seeing somebody else's numbers, seeing what's working, not working for them, man. Right. Again, like you said at the beginning of the call, it, it becomes a game of not making mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right, man. So, you know, final question is around trust. Okay. You and I both know establishing trust inside this industry is extremely difficult. I mean, I didn't even have all of your trust when you first stepped in, right? You were like, Oh, is this, is this real? Is this legit? Like, or, or is this fake? So, so what is the one thing that you would say to somebody that's, that's sitting on the fence? They've been like listening to podcasts. They've been watching videos. They're like sitting there, they're looking at the application and they're like, is this for me? Is it not for me? Like, what is one thing that you would say to that person? Um, basically, <laughs> what are you waiting for? Um, I mean, it's, uh, definitely not going to be easy, but, uh, nothing worthwhile is going to come easy. Um, I don't know, basically, yeah, what are you waiting for? Do you feel, and too, I want to hit this home too. Do you feel like we're just offering quick results or, you know, get rich quick programs? No, because there's uh, no such thing as that. Yep. Okay. So do you feel like what we're doing is literally trying to change people at their core and really set them up with the principles, the skill sets, the foundation that they need to have long, long-term just success. Right. Um, because I mean, like with me, you know, I, it kind of becomes a conditioned thinking you grow up, believe in a certain deal or acting off emotion. I mean, that you just don't rewire that overnight. That takes, uh, I mean, even with the stack, when I first started, I thought, what is this? Yep. And I didn't, I wasn't doing it correctly. And I didn't, just didn't understand it. And then once I got to doing it, I mean, I have, since I, since the day I started doing a stack, I haven't missed a day and I don't, it'd just be weird for me not to do a stack. Yeah. So, but I've rewired my brain that way and uh, kind of, you know, triggers like what you get mad at, what's, what makes you upset over time. You kind of, by doing the stack, there's just things that used to bother me that just don't. You're more business focused and focused on what the facts are and not the emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, yeah, it took time, but we got there. Well, and how many people are going under today with their farm operations strictly because they don't understand how to control their emotions and they're making emotional decisions all over the place. So I'd say all of them <laughs> that have gone under. Yep. So, all right, man, sounds good. Well, we'll cut it off there. Thank you uh, for taking the time to do this with me today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right.